In this episode, I would like to spotlight why democratic nations and their citizens must stay vigilant of how their rights and freedoms are being used against them by external forces that want to disrupt the core that holds their governments and national identities together. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family. Welcome to Four Seas, One Family, where we share thoughts and opinions concerning life in Taiwan, the region, and the world. I'm your host, James Thomas, coming to you from Taipei, Taiwan. And I'm so glad to have you traveling along with me on this journey. And welcome to the show. Whenever there have been significant social and political disruptions in nations, links to security or propaganda departments in countries that view respective governments as threats have been discovered. Surrogate organizations in democratic nations that have direct or indirect links to authoritarian governments have been proven to have been using subversive measures to infiltrate and, in some cases, take total control of groups and organizations fighting against democratic government policies and practices within their own nation. These initiatives are employed to weaken Western social political alliances in nations that have free speech and to create an environment where citizens of a particular country become less tolerant of each other's opinions and beliefs. Now, two of the most significant and prolific nations that have been found to engage in subversive activities to disrupt the internal functions of democratic nations are Russia and China. The two major players in fueling financial, social, and cultural disruptions overseas. Now, many authoritarian governments' goal is to heighten or exacerbate democratic disturbances to incapacitate democracy and nations that they view as hostile to their own social and global initiatives. Now, this isn't to say that so-called democratic governments haven't done or will not do the exact same things authoritarian governments have done or will do in the future. It is just to say that today the means to subvert nations and cripple their economies and developments have reached a level that encourages internal functional social structures to collapse and take everyone down in not only one country, but the whole world as well. Now, we can see examples of this in how Russian intelligence agencies allegedly employed covert operations to disrupt U.S. elections and implant narratives on traditional and social media platforms via second and third parties that propagated misinformation or fake news about U.S. involvement in overseas wars and disputes. And China alleged involvement revolves around diverting funding to the group behind the Black Lives Matters movement through organizations or foundations that have direct support or a relationship with the Chinese Communist Party. Now, remember that the Chinese Communist Party has initiated programs that were explicitly created to influence and attract Western talent and to curb or defocus public opinions and legislation in nations they perceive as their adversaries or countries that are seen as valuable sources of resources that can be used to expand their global interests. Now, one unfortunate truth is by allowing foreign nationals from countries that view Western governments as their enemies to enter Western nations for research and educational opportunities, and in some cases to even immigrate and later become full-blown citizens with all the protected rights a free democratic country and government offers its citizens. U.S. citizen oath. I hereby declare on oath that I absolutely and entirely renounce and abjure all allegiance and fidelity to any foreign prince, potentate, state, or sovereignty, of whom or which I have heretofore been a subject or citizen, that I will support and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, that I will bear arms on behalf of the United States when required by the law, 
that I will perform non-combatant service in the armed forces of the United States when required by the law, that I will perform work of national importance under civilian direction when required by the law, and that I take this obligation freely, without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me God. To a very alarming degree, many Western nations have allowed their legal systems to put themselves in an irreversible predicament. Now, let me explain. It has been discovered that several individuals who have been granted citizenship to mostly Western democratic nations still maintain formal alliances, ideological beliefs, and military obligations and political party membership in their home nation, which may be diametrically opposed to the democratic nation they have become a citizen of. And a few are later employed to use their newly granted citizenship, especially in Western nations, to engage in subversive activities that harm the nation they were allowed to immigrate to. Also keep in mind that nations like Russia and China don't allow imported foreign nationals of any kind the right or the opportunity to participate in national public services, elections, investments, or ownership without having to face harsh interrogation or insurmountable obstacles. Reciprocation just isn't applied or even considered. Now, this concern shouldn't be the concern of just one specific or particular nation. It must be the concern of all nations that have or who are fighting for democratic governance over its people and natural resources. Now, in my next episode, I will look into how authoritarian governments use subversive tactics to control narratives that embarrass their governments overseas and how they apply certain tactics to manage their citizens' behavior both locally and abroad. Now, if you have found what we have to offer of any value, please click on the subscribe and bell buttons below to keep up to date with our current episodes. And if you're listening to our podcast, please subscribe and help us spread the word that we have a lot more in common than we think. We're very interested to hear what you have to say. Before Seas One Family, I'm James Thomas in Taipei, Taiwan. And remember to stay safe and healthy wherever you are in the world. <laughs>